Hey y'all, I will start this video with a song. Following the leader, the leader, the leader, following the leader. What movie is that from? Peter Pan. <laughs> Peter Pan was the ultimate leader and he was the king of the lost boys. I should, I should talk about a Disney movie in all my videos, but um, obviously I grew up watching Disney movies as most white American children did. <laughs> okay, as all American children did. I loved Disney movies, I loved them. I used to go to Disneyland every Friday night, watch the fireworks for like, I don't know, six months or something with my best friend. I used to live right by Disneyland, like 20 minutes away. Anyways, so I wanna talk about this concept of leaders and followers. Um, you can either be a leader or a follower. A lot of times in Christian churches, they'll pray that God will make you the head and not the tail. God, make me the head and not the tail, which means God, make me a leader, not a follower. <clears throat> you know why? Because when you're leading, you get to call the shots. You don't get exploited or manipulated or abused or harassed. But the tricky thing is don't do that to the people who are following you. Don't abuse them. Don't harass them. Don't manipulate them. There's a verse that says, don't lord it over them. <clears throat> when you're in charge of anybody, don't lord it over them. As in, don't be a dick. <laughs> don't be a meanie head. Don't be abusive. Don't, um, yeah, don't like whip people like they're just your slaves or something, you know? Watch out for that. Don't be like, I'm the slave master. You're my slaves. I kind of had that dynamic with my ex because he was seven years younger than me. And I guess that's why they call it a cougar <laughs> when a woman goes after a younger man because it's it's very easy. The, the younger always serves the older. And I remember reading an article like that happens when a woman wants a man to serve her instead of her serving the man. So if the man's older, then usually the woman serves the man. But if the man's younger, then usually the man serves the woman, which is nice. <laughs> it's very nice. I've been in both setups. Half my boyfriends were older. I guess, yeah, you could say half of them were younger, and um, I've been in both setups. Which one did I like more? I definitely like being the older one. It's great. <laughs> it's great. Because basically you say, it's like that expression, I say jump, you say how high. That's kind of how it is. So, um, which in my family, I had both. You know, I had an older brother and I had a younger brother. With my older brother... He was definitely the leader. I was the follower with him, or at least he wanted me to follow. He wanted me to be the follower, but I did look up to him, but he often gave me unsolicited advice that just like really got under my skin. <laughs> I remember there was one book. I was, it was like some workbook and it said, who's the person you hate more than anyone in the world? And I was like, my, my older brother, <laughs> because he was just like, uh, he was a jerk. I mean, he was like, he was cool, but he was a jerk. Like I looked up to him. But anyways, you could say that my whole life I wanted to be him. I wanted to be the leader. So then when I was 18, I got a younger stepbrother. He was like 12, 13. <clears throat> and I didn't necessarily think like, ha, now I'm the top dog. But I was the top dog. And he looked up to me and I would drive him to church. I drove him to church for a while because my church was cooler than, you know, my mom and my stepdad's church, his dad. But, um... There was one time he had a party at our house when my mom and my stepdad were on vacation and he like had like 10 friends over <laughs> and I was like, his name was Michael. The next, I was like, everybody needs to leave. This is not cool. It was just me and him. I was like, everybody needs to leave the house. I need to sleep. This is not okay. And they left and that was great. <laughs> and then the next day I went, I, I was like, let's go for a walk, Michael. I was like, um, we need to talk about that. I was like, you can't, you can't be doing stuff like that, you know? You can't be just randomly having people over. Yeah, what if they damaged our house? That's not okay. I was like, you're a good kid. You're a good kid. Yeah, because I think that i pretty sure my stepdad set a rule, like no parties or something. Anyways, yeah, it was probably like, well, I saw parties in the movies, so I wanted to have a party. It was only ten people, but still. But he did get into some trouble. I think him and some friends, like, broke into a hotel and stole some food. <laughs> He smoked pot. He got kicked out of his private high school because they, there was like sniffing dogs going around in the parking lot and they smelled the pot in his car. So he got kicked out. Yeah, which that's really sad. I mean, that's kind of extreme. 
And that was in California right before they legalized pot. Anyways, but it was fun being the top dog. I really enjoyed it. I liked it. <laughs> I liked being, you know, the one in power, the one that was leading with my younger stepbrother. Um, anyways, overall, like, yeah, if you're leading people, try to... Well, I've always heard... I've read a lot of psychology books. I've always heard and read, you have to do discipline without um, punishment. And there's a difference. Discipline leads to better behavior. Punishment leads to worse behavior. So if you discipline people, like my parents spanked me with a wood spoon. I'm pretty sure on my bare butt. I remember. It was painful. It was extremely painful. A wood spoon. I think it was like, I don't know, yeah, maybe a hundred times. I don't know. But that's why I'm as disciplined as I am now, because they discipline me. You know, and the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. It was just on my butt, nowhere else on my body. I consider that as normal. It wasn't child abuse. It was just, they were training me to be a respectful child, you know? Anyways, but when you, when there's punishment, it leads to worse behavior. So you have the verse, spare the rod, spoil the child. But then you also have the verse, fathers do not embitter your children to wrath. So if you use punishment on anybody, anybody, this could be anyone you're in a relationship with, coworker, spouse, kids, if you use punishment, they're only going to become worse. Because then they hate you, so they don't want to obey you. In my college, we talked about, <clears throat> one of my teachers said, would you rather be a king who is feared or loved? And our conclusion was, it's better to be a king that is loved, because if you are feared, all the people hate you, and they're just going to sneak in your room at night and kill you, if they fear you. But if they obey you out of love, they won't kill you. You'll get a greater return. They'll work harder. They'll do it out of devotion and love rather than fear, you know? And that's really important for anyone leading any group of people is that, yeah, the people will follow you better if, you, if they love you. You know, so it's really important to be kind. If you want people to respect you, respect them. Hands down, no questions asked. If you want people to respect you, you got to respect them. You know, no one's going to respect you if you're not respecting them. You know, like everybody, everybody needs to respect everybody else. You know, a person's a person no matter how small. Everybody's a person. We're all created in the image of God. I love you. God bless. Bye.